بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مذن له ومن يذل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمد عبده ورسوله أما بعد فإن أستك الحديث كتاب الله وأحسن الحدي حدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ظلالة وكل ظلالة في النار أما بعد So we'll just continue inshallah from uh, where we left off last week which was on point 75 on <coughs> the start of this page that we're on at the moment and uh, we were covering the chapter where the Sheikh was explaining having faith in the messengers. So Al Imanu bi Rusul. So we did the beginning. The Sheikh mentioned a few evidences. And we continue from point seventy five, inshallah, today. We'll try and finish this chapter today as well, inshallah. So then the Sheikh he says Beginning from point seventy-five, he says, "Adililu ala anna awwala hum nuh qawluhu taala inna awhayna ilayka hada khitabun lin nabi kama awhayna ila nuh wa nabiyina min baadhi wa awhayna ila Ibrahim wa Ismail wa Isaq wa Yaqub wa Lasbati wa Isa wa Ayub wa Yunus wa Harun wa Sulaiman wa Atayna Dawood Zabura." Zakar Allah jumlatan. من أسمائهم في هذه الآية كما ذكر جملة من أسمائهم في آية الأنعام ومن ذريته داود وسليمان وأيوب ويوسف وموسى وهارون إلى آخر الآيات. so then the sheikh in this uh, paragraph he says he mentions the evidence with regards to uh, uh, نوح عليه السلام prophet Noah being the first of the messengers that was sent. And then the Shaykh, he mentions the ayah that we just read in Arabic. And if we have a look at that, let's just go to the Mus'haf and have a look at that. Inshallah. Give me a second. Surah An-Nisa verse 163, this is from. So the first of uh, the first part of this ayah it is verily we have inspired you, O Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, as we inspired Nuh, Noah, and the prophets after him. We also inspired Ibrahim, Abraham, Ismail, Ishmael, Ishaq, Isaac, Yaqub, Jacob, and Al Asbat, the twelve sons of Yaqub, Isa, Jesus, Ayub, Job, Yunus, Jonah, Harun, Aaron, and Suleiman, Solomon, and to Dawood. David, we gave the Zabur, Psalms. So this is the evidence that the Sheikh he uh, mentions here and cites for us with regards to um, uh, regards to the the messengers and uh, Noah, uh, Nuh alayhi salam being the first messenger that Allah sent to the people. Then the Sheikh mentions here that uh, Allah mentions here in this ayah in the, in a general format the names of um, uh, the names of, of these messengers As he mentioned in another ayah In Surah Al-An'am As we read in Arabic as well He mentioned their names So if we go to Surah Al-An'am For completeness as well uh, Verse 84 uh, Let me see which part of the ayah is uh, Yeah here And among his progeny Dawood So as in regarding Noah, Nuh, regarding Nuh, right? So, and among his progeny, Dawood, David, Suleiman, Solomon, Ayub, Job, Yusuf, Joseph, Musa, Moses, and Harun, Aaron, those who do with reward the good doers. So, this is what the Sheikh mentions in this first paragraph. Let's continue. So, the Sheikh he says, فَأَوَلُهُمْ نُوحٌ عَلَيْهِ صَلَاةُ وَالسَّلَامِ بِدَلِيلِ قَوْلِ تَعَالَى أَوْ بِدَلِيلِ إِلَّا قَوْلُهُ تَعَالَى وَالنَّبِيِّينَ مِنْ بَعْدِهِ بَعْثَهُ بَعْثَهُ اللَّهُ إِلَى قَوْمِهِ 
لما غلوا الصالحين بعد أن أن كان الناس على دين التوحيد منذ آدم عليه السلام إلى عشرة قرون وهم على التوحيد فلما جاء قوم نوح كان فيهم رجال صالحون فلما مات هؤلاء صالحون حزنوا حزنا شديدا فانتهز الشيطان هذه الفرصة وقال لهم سوروا سور هؤلاء صالحين وانصبوا على مجالسكم من أجل إذا رأيتم هذه السور تتذكرون أحوالهم وتنشتون على العبادة فقاموا وصوروا سور هؤلاء الموتى ونسبوها على المجالس فلم تعبد في أول الأمر لوجود العلماء الذين يبينون للناس التوحيد وينكرون الشرك So then the Sheikh in this paragraph, he goes on to uh, continues uh, from the previous paragraph and he mentions here that, so the first of the messengers, it was Nuh alayhi salam, Noah alayhi salam, alayhi salatu wasalam, with the evidence uh, as mentioned here, one nabiyina min ba'di and the prophets after him, and the prophets after him, meaning that the first was Nuh and then after him came the prophets after him mentioned in, in the ayahs that we read in the first paragraph of this lesson in this chapter so then the shaykh he says that Allah sent uh, to his uh, to his people so Allah sent him to his people so Allah sent Nuh alayhi salam to his people when they uh, um, became um, fanatic uh, with regards to the righteous people so when they went into extremes in the righteous people, with regards to the righteous people. So the Shaykh, he mentions here, and that the people, they were upon the deen of, uh, on the deen of Tawheed, they were upon Tawheed. Since the time of Adam, the people were upon Tawheed, up until this point. For 10 centuries, they were upon Tawheed. And then Allah sent Nuh salam to the people. Why? Because they went away from Tawheed. And... <clears throat> They had people, so they had the people of Nuh, the, that comb, that people, they had, it consisted of uh, righteous people, righteous men. So when they died, these righteous men died, you know, the people, they were very sad, you know, they were extremely sad. And so Shaitan took his chance, he, uh, you know, took his chance um, uh, in trying to take them away from the deen of Allah, the deen of Tawheed. And so he said to them, <clears throat> he said to them, uh, you know, make pictures, make pictures, you know, idols, the, you know, so on and so forth of these people, you know, put them around the places that you sit so that it may remind you when you see them, that it may remind you of them, of their affair and how they were. And it may give you energy to uh, worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and give you that um, uh, energy and desire to and remind you in a good way. So, you know, they did that. They followed what the shaitan said. They, you know, they made these idols, you know, these so-called pictures and things of these righteous, the, one, the ones who died, the righteous men who died. They put them around their places where they sit and where they are, you know, uh, where they inhabit. So in the first, in the, in the beginning, in the beginning, keep it simple, in the beginning, these people, they were upon Tawheed. They were upon Tawheed in the beginning. Before Nuh alayhi salam was sent to them, they were upon Tawheed. But then, uh, the first, like let's say the first generation of them, for example, they were upon Tawheed. They didn't uh, commit shirk with these, you know, these pictures and or these idols and so on and so forth. However, later generations or after them, uh, why? Because around them, there were scholars, there were ulama around them that were teaching them and clarifying to them what's right and what's wrong. But after a while, when those ulama had passed away and, and there were none, then eventually the the preceding generations then fell into shirk. So this is what the shaykh has mentioned here. So then the shaykh says, فَلَمَّا مَاتُ الْعُلَمَاءُ وَذَهَبَ الْجِيلَ الْأَوَّلْ جَاءَ الْجِيلَ الْمُتَعَخِرُ وَقَدْ مَاتُ الْعُلَمَاءُ جَاءَ الشَّيْطَانِ إِلَيْهِمْ فَقَالَ لَهُمْ إِنَّ أَبَاءَكُمْ مَا, ن- ما نَسَبُوا هَذِي السُّورِ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُوهَا وَبِهَا كَانُوا يُسْقُونَ الْمَطَرِ فَزَيِّنَ لَهُمْ عِبَادَتُهُمْ فَعْبَدُوهَا مِنْ دُونِ اللَّهِ 
ومن ثم حدث الشرك في الأرض فبعث الله نبيه نوحا عليه الصلاة والسلام يدعوهم إلى الله عز وجل ويردوهم إلى التوحيد الذي هو دين أبي أبيهم آدم عليه السلام لكنهم عاندوا عاندوا واستكبروا وقالوا لا تذرن عليهتكم ولا تذرن ودا ولا سواع ولا يغوث ويعوق ونصرا قال ابن عباس هذه أسماء رجال الصالحين سوروا صورهم ونسبوها على مجالسهم فآل بهم الأمر إلى أن عبدوها من دون الله So then the Shaykh continues from where we left off and the Shaykh says in this paragraph here in the middle of this page So when these righteous people, righteous men, they die uh, uh, sorry, so when the ulama passed away so when the scholars around them passed away and the first generation had passed as well and came later, a later generation, um, the shaitan returned and he came to this generation and said to them, or that generation and said to them, indeed your forefathers, you know, they placed these pictures and these idols and, you know, of the sort that, you know, in order to worship them. And, and, and by that they were, you know, they were, you know, you know, the rain would fall, you know, etc. Uh, that, you know, they'd worship and, they, you know, their prayers would be answered, for example. So the shaitan beautified this for them and, and the, that idol worship and worshipping other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, <clears throat> as we know, which is shirk. And so from there, the shaykh says that that's when shirk occurred in, in the earth. That's the first time that shirk occurred on this earth. So then Allah sent his, sent his prophet messenger Nuh to call them to call his people to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to worship Allah with with Tawheed and return them to the deen of Tawheed which is the deen of Allah and the deen that's with Allah and that's the deen of Adam uh, however they were stubborn these people they became stubborn and they became they were arrogant and so the Shaykh mentions an ayah that we read in Arabic. This is from Surah Al Nuh, verse 23. So let's go to Surah Al Nuh, verse 23, and read that, inshallah. Give me a second. And they have said, You shall not leave your gods, nor shall you leave Wad, nor Sua, nor Yahuf, nor Yawuk, nor Nasr. And they were the names of the idols of these righteous people that they made idols of. So then the Shaykh brings the extra benefit. Shaykh Salih Fawzan, Hafidullah, brings the benefit. He says, Qala ibn Abbas radiallahu anhuma <clears throat> that this so ibn Abbas may Allah be pleased with him said that that these names were the names of righteous men and as we know from the previous paragraphs they uh, their people they made pictures and idols of them and they placed them around there their places that they inhabited whether they was in the homes or other places where they would sit and gather and so their affair became a such that the shaitan came and, you know, they become people of the uh, polytheism. They started worshipping other than Allah, as in uh, in this example, as we know. And so then, obviously, that's the reason why uh, Prophet and Messenger Nuh was sent to his people to call them back to Tawheed. That was his mission, as is the mission of every single Prophet and Messenger. Yeah? So, um, so then the shaykh continues and he says, فَلَمَّا جَاءَهُمْ نُوحَ عَلَيْهِ صَلَاةُ وَسَلَامُ وَنَهَاهُمْ عَنْ عِبَادَتِهَا وَأَمْرَهُمْ بِعِبَادَةِ اللَّهِ قَالُوا لَا تَذَرُونَ آلِهَتَكُمْ لَا تُطِيعُوا نُوحًا وَاسْتَمِرُوا عَلَى كُفْرِهِمْ وَاسْتَمَرُوا عَلَى كُفْرِهِمْ وَتُوْيَانِهِمْ وَعِنَادِهِمْ هَذَا أَوْلُ شِرْكٍ هَدَثَ فِي الْعَرْضِ وَسَبَبُهُ السُّرْحِ وَلِذَلِكَ قَالَ النَّبِيُّ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ إِنْ أَشَدَّ النَّاسِ عَذَابًا عِنْدَ اللَّهِ يَوْمُ الْقِيَامَةِ الْمُصَوِّرُونَ وقال صلى الله عليه وسلم إن الذين يصنعون هذه سور يعذبون يوم القيامة يقال لهم أحيوا ما خلقتم يؤمرون بنفخ الروح في هذه سور من باب التعجيز وتعذيب لهم والعياذ بالله لأن التصوير وسي لأن التصوير أو لأن التصوير وسيلة 
min wasail shirki kama hasala li qawm nuh so this paragraph we, need, we should pay attention to this there's a lot of important points here so the sheikh says so when so when uh, uh, nuh alayhi salam came to his people and uh, uh, forbade them uh, from the worship of idols you know forbade them from shirk and warned them against this shirk and and advise them and command them that they should worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone upon Tawheed they said to him or oh, don't you know don't warn us don't take us away from our idols uh, we're not going to uh, obey you so they continued and the likes of this sort of speech and they um, continued upon their disbelief and their transgression and their stubbornness and this and the sheikh says that this was the first shirk the first uh, shirk that occurred on the earth. This is the very first time it occurred at that time. And its reason, so this is now we should pay attention, and the reason for it, the reason for this polytheism, the pictures, the idols. And that's why the Sheikh said that the Prophet wasallam said in the hadith that we just read in Arabic, that indeed the most severely punished uh, uh, um, people on the day of resurrection or Yom al will be the ones who, who are the picture makers and this is not just for example taking a picture with a photograph this is all forms that leads to shirk. so whether it's an idol whether it's a model you made whether it's a picture you took with your phone whether it's a picture that you took with some form of technology in our times in later times or whether it was uh, a statue or you know uh, something uh, that people still do today but the, uh, uh, in the former times did all of this comes under that and then Sheikh quotes another uh, hadith uh, of the Prophet Sallallahu uh, Alaihi where, where it's mentioned here that those who create uh, these uh, pictures of life forms pictures of life forms uh, so to speak so say somebody takes a picture of someone um these people who create these these pictures of life forms as such, then they will be punished on the day of judgment and it will be said to them, give life to what you created. It will be said to them, give life to what you created, whether it was with your hands to an idol or whether it was through a picture or, or a camera and the likes, as mentioned previously. They will be commanded to blow into that what they created, blow spirit a spirit into it, a ruh, a soul into it, uh, into these pictures and these idols or whatever that they made um, but they won't be able to do it and this is because it will be said to them but because they can't do it they will be punished and, and this is a severe warning for, for people who do this and don't realize and uh, may Allah save us uh, uh, from falling into this uh, this calamity which as we can see is clear that will be punished here and there's a severe warning as mentioned by the sheikh early in the previous paragraph because it, it can lead it can easily lead to somebody becoming shirk and as we all know if you die upon shirk then Allah will not forgive you and as you know from previous books as well that Allah forgives every sin except shirk if you die upon it obviously if you're alive and you realize you committed shirk you ask Allah for forgiveness and Allah will forgive you and you stay away from that but if you die upon shirk you're in big trouble. <clears throat> so it's quite important to just, you know, make a mental note of that because that's quite a few good, good, good points mentioned there that will help us all, inshallah. So then the Sheikh says, he says, فَأَوْلَ الرُّسُلُ نُوحُ وَأَمَّا خَاتَمَ الرُّسُلُ وَآخِرُهُمْ فَهُوَ مُحَمَّدْ صلى الله عليه وسلم قال تعالى مَا كَانَ مُحَمَّدٌ أَبَا أَحَدٍ مِنْ رِجَالِكُمْ وَلَكِنْ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ وَخَاتَمَ النَّبِيِّينَ وَقَالَ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ وَأَنَا خَاتَمَ النَّبِيِّينَ لَا نَبِيَّ بَعْدِي So then in this paragraph the Shaykh he says So as we've learned uh, the first of the messengers was Nuh, Noah and the last of the messengers will be our messenger Prophet and Messenger Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم Then the Shaykh mentions an ayah and this is from as you can see on the page uh, verse 40 Surah Al-Ahzab So let's go there And let's read the ayah Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is not the father Of any man among you 
where he is the message of Allah and the, and the last of the prophets and Allah is ever all aware of everything. That's very clear. And then the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam mentioned here as well towards the end of this paragraph, last part of the paragraph, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said, "I am the seal of the prophets or the last of the prophets. There is no prophet after me." And in Arabic, this last bit here, as the brothers who know Arabic who studied grammar, and for you who don't know, then I'll explain it that this la nabiya, when it's mentioned like this. It means that there is no prophet at all that will come after me. It's clear. It's clear. When you understand the grammar, that means in Arabic that there absolutely is no messenger. There, is, there will be no messenger who will come after me. La Nabiya Ba'di. This is clear. This, there's no doubt in this. So then uh, the Shaykh continues. He says, Fabihi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam khutimat al-risalat as-samawiyya fala فلا يبعث بعده نبي إلى أن تقوم ساعة ولكن شريعته ولكن شريعته باقية إلى باقية إلى أن تقوم ساعة ودينه باق إلى أن تقوم ساعة كما سبق فمن ادعى النبوة بعد محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم فهو كافر ومن صدقه فهو كافر بالله لأنه لا نبي بعده صلى الله عليه وسلم. So then the Sheikh he goes on to say here that so so by the way of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم being sent as the last and final messenger and a final prophet, then that's the seal and the end of the prophets. No more after him, and there will be no more revelation after him. That's the end, and what we have from what the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam will be with us, and that will be the truth up until the establishment of the hour. And the and the Sharia that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam came with will remain up until the establishment of the hour. His religion will remain up until the establishment of the hour, as previously mentioned. So whoever so whoever claims prophethood after Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, he is a disbeliever. And whoever believes that somebody else is a prophet after the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, is a disbeliever in Allah. Why? Because as mentioned in the previous two evidences from the Quran and the hadith of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, that there is no there will no come, there won't be a prophet that comes after after him yeah there's no prophet after him he is the last of the prophets and messengers yeah as in there won't be a new revelation there won't be a new prophet coming he is the last prophet so then the sheikh continues he says qad da'a an nabuwa ba'dahu khalqun kathir wa fadahahum Allah wa adhara kadhibahum وَمِنْ آخِرِهِمْ فِي مَا نَعْلَمْ الْقَادِيَانِ غُلَامْ أَحْمَدِ الْقَادِيَانِ الْهِنْدِي الَّذِي كَانَ فِي الْأَوْلِ يَدْعِي الْعِلْمَ وَالْإِبَادَةَ ثُمَّ ادْعَى أَنَّهُ عِيسَى بْنَ مَرْيَمْ ثُمَّ ادْعَى النَّبُوَةَ وَالْآنَ لَهُ أَتْبَاعَ يسمون, يُسَمُّونَ بِالْقَادِيَانِيَةِ وَقَدْ كَفَرَهُمْ الْمُسْلِمُونَ وَقَدْ كَفَّرَهُمُ الْمُسْلِمُونَ وَنَابَلُوهُمْ وَاتَّبَرُوهُمْ فُرْقَةً أو فِرْقَةً كَافِرَةً خَارِجَةً عَنْ الْإِسْلَامِ وَهُمْ مُنَابَذُونَ وَمُتَارَذُونَ وَلِلَّهِ الْحَمْدِ مِنْ بِلَادِ الْمُسْلِمِينَ وَلَهُمْ نَشَاطٌ وَلَكِنْ نَشَاطُهُمْ يبوء بالفشل الحاصل أنه لا نبي بعد رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم من ادعى النبوة فهو كذاب كما قال صلى الله عليه وسلم لا تقوم ساعة حتى يبعث دجالون كذابون قريبا من ثلاثين كلهم يزعم أنه رسول الله <coughs> Let's just stop there for a second so then 
in this uh, long paragraph, the Sheikh he mentions <clears throat> that the people who claimed, the people that have claimed prophethood after after the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam were many, and Allah exposed them and made their lies apparent. And from the last of them, that the, the Sheikh says, from the last or the very last of them that we know or that's known to us is uh, Al Qadiani or uh, uh, Ahmed Ghulam Ahmed Al Qadiani or Ghulam Ahmed uh, Ghulam Mirza Ahmed Al Qadiani, I think is his full name, who was born in India. And the Sheikh he says here that <clears throat> that in the beginning, his his first claim. In the beginning, you know, he was, you know, sharing knowledge and, you know, talking about ibadah and, you know, as you do da'wah. Then he started claiming that he is Isa ibn Maryam. He started claiming that he was Jesus. Then he started to claim that he was a prophet. Then he, then he ended up with followers. And they are called, as we all know, uh, they are called uh, Qadianis. Why? Because... Uh, this Gulam Ahmad Mirza Al Qadiani uh, uh, is Al Qadian is, is a village in India. That's where it's from. So they have this name for them, Al Qadiani. People say uh, they call themselves Ahmadis, but it's wrong to say that because that's one of the names of the Prophet Sallallahu And whoever says he's Ahmadi, then he's saying that he's a Muhammadi. And if he's saying he's a Muhammadi, then he means he's saying he's a Sunni that is following the way of the. Uh, of the way of Ahlul Sunnah wal Jumaah and the way of the Prophet, so it's incorrect to call them Ahmadis. They're not, so you call them Qadianis is better off, I guess. Yeah. And anyway, the Sheikh he mentions here that you know he claimed all these things and he claimed prophethood that he was the prophet, that he was a prophet. Uh, and and there is people, their movement, the sect is called Qadiani, yeah, yeah, Qadiani, yeah, or Qadianis, as you'd say. And the Muslims, as we know, the consensus, the consensus of all the Muslims is that they are disbelievers. Why? Because they believe that there's another prophet after the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And as we know, whoever believes that is a disbeliever. Uh, um, and so they were cut off, uh, and you know, uh, it was clarified their their situation, and that they are not within the fold of of Al Islam. And so, as we know, they are non-Muslims for the reason that was mentioned. Then the Sheikh says that, um, you know, they have, you know, they have a movement, you know, they have, you know, people and they've tried, you know, to spread their da'wah, these Qadianis, they've tried to spread their false uh, falsehood. Uh, but every time they've tried, it's just returned to them and it's failed, they failed. And the Sheikh says the point being that there is no profit after the messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So whoever claims prophethood is a liar, as the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said in a hadith that we all, I'm sure, we all at least heard once, uh, that the hour will not be established until um, uh, there comes upon the people these liars, yeah, liars, uh, around thirty liars, yeah, around thirty of them, all of them uh, claiming. To be the messenger of Allah or a prophet of Allah or a messenger of Allah. And we know the first one, as we know in the Islamic history, uh, Musaylimatul Kazab. Yeah, and then the last one, as, as far as we know of them, is uh, this uh, Ahmad Gulam Mirza Qadiani, as mentioned by the Sheikh Hafidullah. So then the Sheikh he says here, point. 86. So we'll mention the ayah at the top here as well in the in the header in a second. The Sheikh says, Al Al Mutanabiuna Kathirun, Walakin Allaha, Yafdahu Amrahum, Wayakshifu Sitrahum, Wayubayinu Khiziahum, Linasi, Waman Saddakahum Fawa Kafir, the Anahu Mukadibun Lila, Wali Rasuli, Salah, Wali Salam, Wali Ijma il Muslimina, Allah Hatmin Nubuati, Bi Muhammadin, Salah, Alehi, Wasalam. So then in this paragraph, on this point, the Sheikh says that those who claim prophethood are many. However, Allah Azza wa Jal exposed their affair uh, and exposed their affair and made it apparent to the people and, and their falsehood and their 
the games that they play, the trickery and all the and the lies that they commit being clarified to the people. So whoever believes them is a disbeliever. Why? Because he is inherently then lying upon Allah and His Messenger, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and also because there's a consensus of all of the Muslims that that the Prophet, the messengership ended uh, with the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. This is a consensus among the Muslims as well. <clears throat> so then the Sheikh, uh, okay, let me hold on. Uh, hold on here for a second. Let's just uh, read this ayah from here. That's from the header. This is from... It's going to be mentioned a few times, so uh, we'll read it now since we're coming across it. Verse 36 of Surah Al-Nahl. Let's go there. Verse 36, Surah Al-Nahl. Uh, I'll read the whole. I'll read the whole ayah. And verily we have sent among every ummah, community and nation a messenger proclaiming Worship Allah alone and avoid or keep away from Tarut, all false deities, etc. I do not worship Tarut besides Allah. Then of them was some whom Allah guided and of them was some upon whom the strain was justified. So travel through the land and see what was the end of those who denied the truth. <clears throat> so that's the whole ayah. So we'll continue. So then the Sheikh says, wa kullu ummatim." بعث الله إليهم رسولا أي كل أمة من الناس يبعث الله إليها رسولا ليقيم الحجة عليهم لإن يقول ما جاءنا من بشير ولا نذير ولقوله تعالى وما كنا معذبين حتى نبعث رسولا فكل أمة من الأمم السابقة يبعث الله إليها رسولا كما قال تعالى وَإِن مِّنْ أُمَّةٍ إِلَّا خَلَا فِيهَا نَذِيرٍ لَكِنْ يَجِبُ أَنْ نَعْرِفَ مَا هِيَ دَعْوَةُ الرُّسُلِ ما لَكِنْ يَجِبُ أَنْ نَعْرِفَ مَا هِيَ دَعْوَةَ الرُّسُلِ دَعْوَةُ الرُّسُلِ كُلُّهُمْ مِنْ أَوْلِهِمْ إِلَى آخِرِهِمْ هِيَ دَعْوَةٌ إِلَى التَّوْحِيدِ لِقَوْلِهِ تَعَالَى وَلَقَدْ بَعَثْنَا فِي كُلِّ أُمَّةٍ رَسُولًا أَنْ يَعْبُدُ اللَّهَ وَاجْتَنِبُ التَّاغُوتِ فَكُلُّ مَا أُبِدَ مِنْ دُونِ اللَّهِ تَاغُوتِ كَمَا يَأْتِي فِي أَنْوَاءِ التَّوَاغِيتِ أَمْ مِنْ أَنْوَائِهِمْ مَا أُبِدَ مِنْ دُونِ اللَّهِ وَهُوَ رَاضٍ بِذَلِكَ كَمَا سَيَأْتِي So then the Shaykh mentions here in this paragraph and his speech so the Sheikh who's explaining this book refers to the original author of this book and just quotes this in bold as we all are aware of, just as a reminder and his speech and every nation or community Allah sent to it a messenger i.e. the Sheikh says i.e. every nation of from the people Allah sent to them a messenger so that the proof would be established upon them and that they don't say Oh, n nobody came to us. Nobody came to us with the good news. Nobody came to us warning us. And then the Sheikh uh, says, and with regards to the speech of Allah Azawajal that we read here, this is from Surah Al Isra, verse 15. Let's go there. Surah Al Isra, verse 15. We'll read the whole ayah. Whoever goes right, then he goes right only for the benefit of his own self. And whoever goes astray, then he goes astray to his own loss. No one laden with burdens can bear another's burden. And we never, so this is where we should pay attention. And we never punish until we have sent a messenger to give warning. So that's clear. That a people won't be punished. Except that a, a warner had come to them, warning them, informing them about these affairs. Then the Sheikh, he says, he says, but it's obligatory that we know. What, what the call, what what the messengers were calling to? What is their call? And the Sheikh says the call of the messengers, all of them, from the the first of them to the last of them, it is the call to at tawheed, as the Sheikh mentioned, uh, the original author, and also uh, the Sheikh who's explaining this book, time and time again on all of the pages that we've gone through this book from the day one till today, today. 
is a common theme that's repeated as you as we all aware now as well and it's tawheed and this is the call of the prophets all of the prophets and messages and what as you know is to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone uh, in truth without associating any partners with him in worship so then the shaykh says here and he mentions uh, the ayah that we read at the top here. Yeah. So we won't go through that again. وَلَقَدْ بَعَثْنَا فِي كُلِّ أُمَّةٍ رَسُولٌ أَنِ اعْبُدُ اللَّهَ وَاجْتَنِبُ التَّعْوُدُ In in summary, that you know, we sent every nation a messenger in order that they worship Allah, that they told to be to worship Allah Subhanahu wa Taala alone upon Tawheed and avoid the Taghut, to avoid all the false deities in whatever shape or form they're coming. Come in. So the Shaykh says, so everything that is worshipped besides Allah is called a Taghut. As it comes, as it will come in a following chapter. So this chapter is going to come um, uh, next week or the last lesson in, in, in a fortnight. That's the last lesson. So it will be covered there, inshallah, depending on how much you get through. But either next week or the week after, it will be our last lesson. And that's when the Shaykh will cover this. And he's mentioning it now. So he's saying it will come in a chapter called The Types of False Deities or Tawagheet. Um and, f- and the Sheikh just mentions as an extra benefit He goes from those types of Tawagheet or False Deities uh, As an example is those uh, who are uh, who are worshipped besides Allah And they are pleased with it So just as a simple example Let's say uh, one of us um, Somebody, you know uh, you know, God forbid, you know, but somebody started worshipping you in whatever type of worship it was and you were pleased with it, then you're a Taghut. You're, you're one of those types uh, of the Taghut. You come under that category. But the Sheikh will explain it more uh, as we go through that lesson, inshallah, and it's an important lesson. So uh, make sure you attend that, inshallah. Uh, so let's continue. So then the Sheikh says, فَمَأْنَا قَوْلِهِ تَعَالَى وَشْتَنِبُوا الْتَاغُوتِ and avoid false deities. So the meaning of Allah's speech of uh, avoid uh, false deities, the Sheikh says, "A ishtanibu ibadat al-awthan wal-asnam wal-qubur wal-adriha hadi hi al-tawaqid." Fadlat al-ayy al-karima la an da'wat al-rusul kullu kulliha kullaha tatarakazu al tawhidi min awalihim ila akhirihim. So then the Sheikh says, "Is to avoid the worship of." Uh, statues, idols, uh, anything that is worshipped, such as the graves, um, uh, you know, tombs, whatever, all of these sort of things, right? Anything that's worshipped, and they are classified as a tawagit. Yeah, tawut is a singular, and the plural is a tawagit. So this demonstrates to us, uh, this ayah demonstrates to us that, and it shows us. That the call of the prophets, the da'wah or the call of the pro- prophets and messengers, all of it, all, all of it, it was focused around a tawheed. Yeah, it was focused around the tawheed of Allah Azza wa Jal from the start of them to the, for the first of them to the last of them. Sid the Shaykh, <clears throat> he says, let's see, كَمَا قَالَ سُبْحَانُهُ وَتَعَالَى وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَا مِنْ قَبْلِكَ مِنْ رَسُولٍ إِلَّا نُوحِي إِلَيْهِ أَنَّهُ لَا إِلَهَ إلا أن فعبدون وقوله <تصفيق> ينزل الملائكة بالروح من أمره على من يشاء من إباده أن أنذروا أنه لا إله إلا أن فتقون. <تصفيق> so then the Sheikh quotes a few ayahs here, two ayahs, sorry, a couple of ayahs <تصفيق> as evidences as to his previous paragraph and what he said. So let's have a look at them. Let's get the translation, the meaning. Surah Al-Anbiya verse 25. Let's go there first. Verse 25. And we did not send any messenger before you, O Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, but we inspired him saying, La ilaha illa ana. None has a right to be worshipped in truth except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So worship me alone and none else. Yeah, that's clear. And then Surah Al-Nahl verse 2. <clears throat> Let's go there. He sends down the angels with inspiration of his command to whom of his slaves he pleases, saying, Warn mankind that la ilaha illa ana, none has a right to be worshipped in truth except but I, 
So fear me by abstaining from sins and evil deeds. <clears throat> so that's what's being said there. And that's clear to us. That's clear to us from all that we've learned today and read today. Alhamdulillah. Let me just have a quick look to see how much we've got to go. Okay, Alhamdulillah. We're nearly finished. we we'll finished over here, I believe. Just give us one second, brothers. Just want to check <clears throat> where we're finishing. Yeah, we finished on point seventy-seven, so we're nearly there. Another five minutes or so, inshallah. <clears throat> so the Sheikh says, "For that, I want to rusuli kullihim ila tawhid wa ifrad Allah Jalla wa Ala bil ibada wa nahiyan al-shirk. هذه هي دعوة الرسل ثم بعد التوحيد تأتي الشرائع من من الحلال والحرام وتفاصيل الشرائع تختلف باختلاف الأمم وحاجة الأمم وينسخ الله منها ما يشاء ثم نسخت كلها بشريعة الإسلام الحلال والحرام والأحكام والإبادات والأوامر والنواهي أما الأصل وهو التوحيد فهذا لا اختلاف فيه ولا نسخ هذا دين واحد دين الرسل كلهم من أولهم إلى آخرهم دين واحد. So then the Sheikh says in this paragraph, so the call of the messengers, all of them, was to Tawheed. And meaning, as we all know, uh, to single out uh, Allah Azza wa Jal with all worship. And to uh, abstain from falling into or committing acts of polytheism, shirk. Right? <clears throat> This is, the Sheikh says, this is the call of the messengers. And after that, after Tawheed, after the calling of Tawheed, when <clears throat> it comes, the rest of the legislation, <clears throat> for example, from the uh, uh, permissible to the impermissible, halal and haram, and the details of the legislation. Um, and the Sheikh says that when it comes to the, legis the rest of the legislation, then this differs from nation to nation depending on the need of that nation uh, and uh, the sheikh says here that Allah abrogates from it whatever he wills and whatever he will wants so the sheikh says then all of that uh, which came before Al-Islam and the Prophet Musa that is all abrogated when uh, the, when Allah sent the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and so that is the only thing that the only religion that's to be followed, and the rules and the legislation to be followed. Everything else before it, from from whatever was in the Torah, the Psalms, uh, the Torah, uh, the uh, the the Bible, for example, the the Injil, sorry, um, the Gospel, all abrogated, all of it's abrogated. Is no, is no longer followed. So then the Sheikh says, so the halal, the permissible, and the haram, the impermissible, the rulings, uh, worship, uh, command, commandments, and prohibitions, uh, you know, that's all with regards to that. It says, as for the foundation, the foundation is a tawheed, monotheism, and there is no differing in that, and it does not abrogate this is the uh, this is a foundation and it does not abrogate every messenger came with this foundation of tawhid worship allah alone and not associating any partners in worship with him yeah because this is one religion it's the deen of the messengers all of them from the first of them to the last of them that's what the sheikh has mentioned in that paragraph we will move on to the next paragraph the Sheikh says, كَمَا قَالَ تَعَالَى لِكُنْ جَعَلْنَا مِنْكُمْ شِرْعَةً وَمِنْ هَاجَةً وَدِينُ التَّوْحِيدِ هُوَ عِبَادَةُ اللَّهِ بِمَا شَرَعَ فِي كُلِّ وَقْتٍ بِحَسْبِهِ فَإِذَا نَسَخَ هَذَا الشَّرْعَ انتقل إلى النَّاسِخْ فَمَنْ مَنْ أَسَرَّ وَبَقِيَ عَلَى الْمَنْسُوخِ وَتَرَكَ النَّاسِخْ فَإِنَّهُ يَكُونْ كَافِرٌ بِاللَّهِ عز وجل لأن دين المنسوخ لا يكون دينا بعد نسخه وإنما هو الدين قبل أن ينسخ فإذا نسخ فلا يكون دينا ويكون الدين هو ناسخ ولهذا نسخ الشريعة الإسلام ما قبلها من الشرايع فمن بقي على اليهودية أو النصرانية بعد بعثة محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم فهو كافر 
لِأَنَّهُ يَعْمَلُوا بِدِينِ مَنْسُوخٍ انْتَحَى وَقْتُهُ So then, this is a very important point now. So we should pay attention, inshallah. Again. Then the Shaykh says that, that as Allah said with regards to his previous paragraph, let's go, and this is what we read in Arabic just now, and it's from Surah Al-Ma'idah, verse 48. Let's go there. Verse 48. Long. Uh, let me see if I can find this quickly for you, brothers. Uh, okay. Let me see. We'll read from here. So judge between them by what Allah has revealed and follow not their vain desires, diverging away from the truth that has come to you to teach among you. We have prescribed, here we go, we have prescribed a law and a clear way. If Allah willed, He would have made you one nation, but that is may test you. And why is forgiven you? So strive in a race and good deeds to return to Allah. Then, So this is the whole ayah, but the part here is here that we should focus on we have prescribed a law in a clear way yeah so that we have prescri- so uh, we have prescribed a law and a clear way yeah so likullin jalna so for every nation it's had its legislation and a way right so this is what the shaykh has said here and so he says that this is the deen of tawheed right tawheed it is the worship of allah alone with that which Allah legislated, yeah, in every time period they legislated, yeah. So here's the now this is where you should pay attention. So the Sheikh says, so if so, so if um, a legislation is um, uh, abrogated, then you move on to that which abrogated it. So if somebody continues and persists upon that which has been abrogated and leaves the thing that has actually abrogated it, then he is a disbeliever in Allah Azza wa Jal. Why? The Shaykh says because the deen, uh, because the religion, yeah, the, the deen, the religion that has been abrogated, it doesn't remain a religion after it has been abrogated. So if something, so if something has been abrogated, then that's it. There's you don't it's no more following it's it's finished. And the Sheikh says uh, like he says as for the uh, the religion, uh, then he says wa inna ma qabla an yansuk. So it's it, it, it's a religion to be followed up until the point that has been abrogated. So if it has been abrogated, then the one the thing that has abrogated it, the abrogator that's to be followed the one that comes after it, right? So there's some technical terms here, but it's straightforward to understand. Uh, and the Sheikh says, and for that reason, the deen, the Sharia of Islam, the Sharia of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, has abrogated everything that came before it. So whoever remains upon uh, Judaism or or, or, or Christianity um, uh, after the sending of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, i.e., our time, for example, then he is a disbeliever in Allah azza wa jal. Why? Because he is acting and following a religion that has been abrogated and his time has finished. So, so that, that the Sheikh brings the example there for us to help us understand uh, the technical terms he was mentioning a few lines before. So, the next chapter is Al Kufru bit Tawut wal Iman billah. So, uh, disbelieving. In the false deities and having faith and belief in Allah Azza wa Jal. So uh, uh, we'll cover that. There's only like two lessons to go now. I think we should finish either next week, probably the week after. And then we'll uh, move on to another book, inshallah. So we're towards the end of the book now, alhamdulillah. Uh, it's, been a, it's been a long time. So uh, we're almost there now. So we'll stop here on point 77, as I said, inshallah. And we'll continue next week, same time, bidnay ta'ala. سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك أشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت واستغفرك وأتوب إليك السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته